Thank you, Simon, for that introduction. And how good is it to be in a room full of change makers? Yeah. I'd like to speak today about the very basics that you expect and deserve from your taxes. The politicians elected to solve all of your problems have, over many decades, increased the size of the bureaucracy that reaches into every area of your life and consumes more than a third of what you collectively work to produce. Yeah. But ironically, it's the champions of big intrusive government who have neglected the essentials that you actually expect in return for your efforts. You see that neglect on our potholed roads. You experience it waiting hours at your emergency department, and you suffer from it when you and your family are impacted by crime. Here, in ACT, we give careful thought to the role of the state. And we understand that the first, most fundamental job of the government is to protect your rights, to keep you safe from those who would do you harm. Because you can't be the change in your life if you don't feel safe and secure building a livelihood, a family, building a community. Under Labour and the Greens, there was plenty of focus on the rights of criminals. And hey, criminals, they do have rights. But they also have obligations, just like we all do. So I say, if the criminals want the same rights as everyone else, then perhaps they can start upholding their obligations just like everyone else. <laughs> because, you know, we want them to be good members of our society and the community and their own families. Grown adults, even those with tough upbringings, actually do have a choice about whether or not to nick that Mazda Demio <laughs> or rob that next dairy, or commit that third assault, it's not their right. So in government, ACT is rebalancing the scales of justice, away from the excuses of criminals and back towards your rights yeah. as citizens. <laughs> These are your rights as you try to get ahead in life through your own honest efforts. You're no longer forced to pay lawyers, activists and failed journalists to write sob stories for hardened offenders <laughs> because we scrap the funding for the so-called cultural reports. Yeah. Yeah. We've abolished Labor's prisoner reduction target because a, a self-imposed limit on our capacity to lock up people who would do you harm is just madness. Yeah. 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 In fact, at the latest budget, we prioritised funding for more than 800 additional prison beds. In six years, under Labour, gang membership on the national list has increased by 92%. The known gang members now number just under 10,000. Within the Act's first 100 days in government, we ensured that if someone who victimises you is found to be a member of a gang, that membership will become an aggravating factor at their sentencing. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, I've just lost my speech. <laughs> Oh, if you let me go, Ro. <laughs> OK, and if you're victimised while working sole charge or in a shop attached to the family home, we'll soon be making that an aggravating factor too. As the minister responsible for courts, I'm working on timely access to justice and easing the burden on the victims of crime by giving you more options to participate in court remotely. We're bringing back three strikes for serious, violent sexual offenders yeah. 
and this time it's here to stay. The latest version of the policy, as approved by my Cabinet colleagues, will prevent minor offences from being caught up in the three strikes system, which means that we're denying any future Labour-led government their favourite excuse for repealing it. Yeah. Labour's rushed response to the Christchurch shootings punished every responsible licensed firearms owner in New Zealand for the evil actions of one Australian <laughs> who should never, he should never have been given a firearms licence in the first place. And it didn't work. Last year, New Zealand experienced nearly half its yearly average gun deaths in a period of just 17 days. With ACT in government, we are shifting the focus onto the criminal misuse of firearms that Labour failed to address by increasing police search powers so that they can search the gangs for their guns. Yeah, yeah. Long overdue. We are consulting now on removing red tape and unnecessary repetitive burden on the volunteers that run our clubs and ranges in the best interests of public safety. We have launched a review of Labour's firearms registry to ascertain whether it's actually contributing to public safety, whether or not it's cost effective, and the security around the data that is collected. Firearm owners are legitimately concerned about their and their family's safety should they become the target of a home invasion based on the leaked registry information. We are also committed to rewriting the Arms Act during this term of government and aim to create an enduring regime that our country can be proud of once again. In the youth justice space, our fantastic Children's Minister, Karen Chaw, is establishing military-style academies for serious young offenders, while also bringing back order and structure to our youth justice facilities. Even from the back bench, ACT is fighting for common sense in the justice system. And my colleague over there, Todd Stevenson, is the sponsor of a private member's bill that would require any prisoner applying for parole to first undertake rehab or education courses. Yes. This bill has passed its first reading with support from those in Parliament. And I'll do a bit of a shout out to Te Pāti Māori, who uh, forgot to cast their vote on that one. <laughs> in fact, um, Te Pāti Māori campaigned on abolishing prisons and introducing a tikanga-based justice system. It sounds, it sounds ridiculous, but it's the natural conclusion of an increasingly mainstream claim that prisons are somehow anti-Māori. Yeah, I'd like to address that claim. The latest New Zealand Crime and Victims Survey shows that Māori, more than any other ethnicity, make up a large number of victims of crime. We make up 37% of the victims. And the figure is even higher for Māori women. I believe that the rights of those victims matter, and that's what I'm fighting for. So Te Pāti Māori, dare not tell me that any of ACT's mission is anti-Māori. Not once have I heard Te Pāti Māori stand up for Māori victims of crime actually for any victims of crime, <laughs> not once. And I'd like to finish with a message for anyone who's thinking of joining a gang or ram raiding a petrol station or perhaps just intimidating their community. Okay, they're probably not in this crowd, but <laughs> they might be watching anyway. Your protectors in Labour and the Greens have been turfed out of government. Yeah. Now the Act has its hands on the levers of justice, we will not use a light touch when it comes to protecting the rights of peaceful, productive New Zealanders. We threw out those wet bus tickets. The joyride, it's over. Yeah.
X road spikes are permanently deployed. <laughs> Actions have consequences now, and it's time to make a positive change in your life. Your decisions matter, and that your efforts also matter. And this happens to be Axe universal promise for every New Zealander. If you can get out of bed each day and make a positive contribution to your own future, you'll be rewarded and your rights will be protected. Thank you very much.